Hey, what's up, everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we are doing the what's next on the undefeated monster, the undisputed super bantamweight champion of the world at 122 pounds, Nayoya Inoue. All my Japanese fans, you guys are my guys. You're you're my dogs. You 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 make my my page pop, and I appreciate the shit out of you guys. Here's a video on your boy. Um, one of my favorite fighters in boxing right now, and um, I, I I might I think I'm leaning more towards him as a pound for pound king of boxing. It's hard to overlook Terence Bud Crawford, but I might just it, 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 anyway is right there. They're like co number ones in my book. <clears throat> but um, before we get into all that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel, I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So, anyway, returned on May 6th against Luis Neri. That was the, the former two division champ. Uh, it was his WBC mandatory challenger. And he suffered the first knockdown of his career in the first round. And then it almost like he fucking went in, like they say, superhero mode. He just found a zone and started snapping the head back of Neri, scored a couple knockdowns and then brutally fucking knocked him out in the sixth round. Um, fantastic finish. Nayoya, anyway, is a special fighter. He just is, and the guy is just, he is a monster. I mean, his nickname, I, I, there might not have ever been a more fitting nickname than the monster for this guy. He is fucking insanely good and very special, and that was a great win. And now the big question is, what's next for Nayoya anyway? Um, we'll start with the Jean Riel Casimero. Um, I know that's a personal fight for him. Definitely one that's on the table. But um, I, I really can't. I really don't see him taking on Casimero. Maybe he does. Maybe he fools me and goes after him. But I, I mean, Casimero hasn't really done anything to earn that fight. And. Um, I mean, I think all the governing bodies would absolutely allow him to do what he wants in his next fight. Um, you know, but I just, I don't know if he really gives a shit about fighting um, what's his name. So, I, I don't know. Right now, I'm not really seeing that one. Now we'll go to, um, we'll, we'll, I'm going to entertain first potential fights at 126. Because I know that's a flirtation, you know, for him. Um, moving up to 126 and going after a world title there. To be honest, I don't see him fighting Rafael Espinosa or Sergio Sanchez, even though they're both top rank. They're fighting on for top rank in June for the WBO belt. I don't see him going after the WBO title. I think uh, Espinosa is going to win that fight, and I just think as his debut fight to go up and fight a guy that's six one. And, and just so much, you know, taller and the reach, I think it'd be a mistake. And I don't think he's gonna go that route. Um, <clears throat> the other option and more likely is a showdown with Luis Alberto Lopez. I think Luis Alberto Lopez wants the fight. Um, I think anyway, if he goes up there, it's gonna be to fight Lopez for the IBF title. I think that fight makes a lot of sense for both guys. Um, so I think this is the most likely option. Um, now, if Lopez decides to move up to 130 and challenge for the title there, that's going to be interesting because um, I, I don't I don't see the benefit in any way moving up and fighting um, the winner of of uh, that Diamani or or K guy. Even though I mean they'd be the world champion, so it wouldn't matter. And anyway, he's going to bring in you know uh, asses to the seats. He's going to bring in a lot of tension no matter what. But to fight one of those guys, I just think it's kind of a waste for uh, anyway. But that's just my opinion. Now, running through the division now, you know, the the 122-pound division where he's at, I'm going to run through the guys that, I, that are there. Stephen Fulton Jr., he's moving up to 126. He's already the WBA's number one ranked contender up there. If um, Raymond Ford, after, after his fight with Nick Ball, if he vacates the WBA belt because he wants to move to 130, um, then Stephen Fulton would be the guy that anyway would have to fight in a rematch. You already destroyed him. So I, I just don't see any way doing that. I don't see him in, in Fulton fighting. 
Then there's, uh, you know, a rematch of Luis Neri. Not going to happen. He destroyed him. A rematch of Marlon Tapless. He destroyed him last year. So that's off the table. Then you got Marajan Akhmadaliyev, the former unified champion. Um, I think this is one of the most more likely options right here. Akhmadaliyev is, is the mandatory for the WBA belt. He narrowly lost a split decision to Marlon Tapolis last year. That's the only defeat of his career. Um, I think most people feel that was uh, was more of a fluke. He was overlooking him. He didn't start fighting until the second half of the fight. That's why he lost. So I think he would. Um, I think this is a serious uh, in serious consideration right here because he's a mandatory challenger and Akhmadaliyev is an entertaining fighter. Um, then there's Azat Hovanasian. I don't think he'd fight Azat Hovanasian because Hovanasian got knocked out against Neri. It'd be an entertaining fight while it lasted. I just don't think he'd entertain it because Hovanasian is not a big name. But man, he, it would be a great fight. I'd love to see that matchup. I just don't think he's going to entertain that fight. Then you got undefeated top contender Sam Goodman. Sam Goodman is his mandatory challenger for two belts, the IBF and WBO title, and he's undefeated. I think this is the other serious consideration for Inouye. Now, I know Inouye said he mapped out a plan. They said that earlier in the year. He was thinking about uh, MJ Akhmadalia for September and then potentially a December fight, and Sam Goodman's name was being thrown around. But Sam Goodman's name was being thrown around recently for Inouye um, for his next fight. And I think him or Akhmadalia makes sense. Goodman beat... Um, fucking what's his name Raiz Salim last year to become the mandatory challenger he has a win over former champ TJ Doheny he's undefeated he's on that side of the world fighting out of Australia so they're very close to each other I think a, both fan bases would come in for that fight I think that fight makes a ton of sense and is definitely a likely option Raiz Salim not seeing it he lost to Goodman there there's there just no attraction for a fight there undefeated Lee, Liam Davies a uh, British fighter wouldn't be surprised, but I just don't think he's done enough, and I don't think anyway is considering it. But I wouldn't be surprised just because he is an undefeated British fighter, and the British fans bring bring a lot of a lot of uh, assets to the seats. And anyway's already beaten uh, a bunch of British guys, so he knows that already. He knows uh, British fans will come out for their fighters, so that one potentially could be an option. Ionu Baluda, the veteran, not an option absolutely don't see that one then other fighters that are that are you know we're in the mix coming into the year david picasso he's a wbc's number one ranked contender but he hasn't really done anything I, and he and he already um worked his mandatory when he beat neary so that that's not there uh again john riel casimero he's high up in the wbo that is a potential matchup for anyway uh i don't want to see it but i i, I there are Anyway, that is a personal matchup for him. So he might go after that one. Um, Olin Dohun, um, Shabuz M Masood, and Carl James Martin. Um, all guys I've never heard of. And I just don't think any of them have a chance at anyway. Uh, TJ Do Doheny was being floated as a potential opponent. I just don't see why. He's already been beaten like multiple times. And he, yeah, he's making a decent little comeback here, but I don't, I don't think he should be in consideration for any way. I, I don't think that that fight makes any sense for him. And then Israel Picasso uh, was a decent, you know, was a name, uh, highly ranked, but he's not a name that anybody knows. So I don't think any way he's going to fight him. Um, so overall, I think it's, it really comes down to potentially four, four opponents for me. Um, I, I really believe, well, and then something that's been floated recently would be Bam Rodriguez if he gets by, uh, Estrada. I think that's a big jump, two more weight classes for Bam. Um, and, and I, I don't think any way should consider that, but I, but that, that's being floated. I don't know how serious that is or not. The serious fights, I think there's four on the table. Um, I think... The potential move to, to featherweight to fight Luis Alberto Lopez for the IBF title is there. Jean Riel Casimero is there because that's a personal fight for him. And then the two mandatory challengers, Marajan Akhmadaliyev, MJ, 
and undefeated Sam Goodman. If I had to pick, I think the fight that makes the most sense in terms of uh, if he stays in division, it would be the fight with Goodman. He has not been beaten. That side of the world, a lot of fan, a big fan base from Australia, Japan, they're close to each other. I think that's the fight that makes the most sense. Dollar amount plus he gets rid of two mandatories right there. And then you let MJ go back and fight Topolis again or something to really earn the fight, you know, more. MJ is right there, though. He's not too far behind Goodman. It's just he suffered the setback with Topolis. Um, and I think he should beat another decent fighter, even Topolis, to really earn that that fight with anyway. Um, I, I do like, uh, again, I said Sam Goodman already. I love a showdown with him and Luis Alberto Lopez. So if he wanted to give up Undisputed at 122 and move up to 126 and go after the world title there, I'm all for it. I love a matchup with him and Luis Alberto Lopez. So I think that one makes a lot of sense too. And then the John Riel Casimiro thing, I guess I get it because he's, it's a personal fight and Casimiro's got a bigger name. He's from that side also. But I, I just, I, I'd like... I like to see him go after big names or move up to another weight class or go after undefeated fighters like Sam Goodman, you know? Plus, again, Goodman's the number one contender in two of the weight classes, not just one, two. So I think that makes sense. So I'm hoping it's the Goodman or the Lopez fight is what I'm hoping for. I would also like to see the, the Akmadalia fight. Um, I think Casimiro is an option. I, you know, there is the option of, uh, of what's his name from 115. Bam Rodriguez or Estrada, and then there's also um, I, 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 I'm throwing it out there as an outside option, Liam Davies maybe, but I doubt it. So, so that's it. That's what I got. That's my what's next on the undefeated, undisputed super bantamweight world champion, the monster Nyoya Anyway, following his dominant knockout victory over Luis Neri to retain the undisputed title. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.